Hi guys, one year vaping one. No fancy intro today because I am just uh, uploading straight to YouTube or rather recording straight from YouTube. And that's because I just want to put up a quick update on what's been going on recently. <laughs> it's been quite a while since I've updated the YouTube channel uh, since I've actually even posted on Facebook and even longer since I've talked on the blog. And for guys, for you guys who have been coming back to check to see what's been going on, I really apologize for you know, not providing you guys with all that much updates. Reason being, well, um, I'm going through some stuff in my real life, or rather in my offline life, and that includes a lot of things. Um, mainly, I'm going through a career change right now. I've always been a uh, editorial slash PR slash events guy, and that's given me a lot of freedom in terms of running the blog and running or rather uh, exploring a lot of things bit related since I'm based at home. This right here is not just my computer room, but it's also my office. Uh, it's also uh, where I do a lot of my work, where I spend most of my days right now. Um, but it's come to a stage where being cooked up in a room by myself for most of the day uh, is starting to become very negative on my life. and. Therefore, I was looking for a change, and uh, I'm going to have a big change soon. I've taken up a 9 to 5, or rather uh, a 9 to whatever time work finishes, and uh, I'm going to be an ad man. <laughs> I've joined an ad agency, so that's definitely going to be a hectic, hectic time to come. But I'm not going to let that sort of stop everything on dating work. In fact, I believe that what I learned there will uh, actually help me in building up a thing when, you know, we all started from a blog, then I started the Facebook page, then the YouTube channel, then the store, and it's been a wonderful journey so far, uh, both from me learning the essentials of vaping, you know, back from the days of my EVIC, still works, you know, still got my bathing apes there. <laughs> That's more than a year ago. And every step since then has just been wonderful. Especially so since I started the YouTube channel, since I started the store, I've actually managed to get in touch with a lot of you guys. Uh, either you emailing me or me emailing you back uh, through all the PMs in Facebook. Thank you for taking time out of your day to just chat me up. Uh, it's been a wonderful journey so far, and although I see it slowing down a bit in terms of what I'll be posting on the YouTube channel, what I'll be doing on the Facebook page, uh, I still do believe that the journey has not ended. It's still going, it's still going, and it's only going to get better. Uh, without trying to sound too uh, pessimistic, you know, time is money, money is time, and my time now belongs to the company. So, yeah, still, I have my evenings to myself, hopefully. I have the weekends to myself, hopefully. <laughs> so, I'm definitely going to keep on uh, recording reviews and uh, videos. The blog, in fact, might do a bit better now since I will be away from the home office. I don't know if I already said this, but this isn't just the computer room where I have my toys and my computer. Uh, this is actually my home office and I do most of my work here. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be great to get out and see the world. Maybe it's going to give me a new perspective on vaping, on myself, and on recording these sort of videos in the future. Great! Now, let's talk about some of the new gear that's gone in and out of the Vaping One HQ. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is this red tube here. Red tube. <laughs> if you know, you know. If you don't, don't look it up. <laughs> Basically, this red tube... Uh, contains a very sort of interesting atomizer and it comes all the way from Korea and um, you know right now Korea is mainly known in the vaping world for the Chiyu that's where Star of Mojo comes from that's where the legendary Chiyu comes from uh, but but well if you, if, if, if you follow the style of Mojo then you know about the Chiyu then you also know about the IOS TV and that is the reverse genesis atomizer, right? 
And um, what's in this tube sort of reminds me of that. Um, or rather, it's an improved version of that. And that is the uh, nitro. This dinky thing right here. The nitro. Uh, I don't know how to get the camera to focus on this YouTube recording. But anyway, this is the nitro. It is a dual coil reverse genesis atomizer. See if I can take this off here. There is it. There are two uh, wick holes there, two wick holes here. And I mean, dual call Genesis optimizers are already a pain to set up. When they are reversed, it's even more difficult because you always have to find that balance um, with your wick, with your stainless steel mesh wick too tight and then you get dry hits, too loose, a, a straw and then you get flooding. So far I've been getting flooded, uh, flooding non-stop, uh, either that or just dry hits. I can't find a perfect sort of uh, equilibrium there. So I haven't done a review yet. Uh, I've managed to send it with cotton but it just feels very dirty to use cotton in a generative atomizer. I'm not saying you can't. I suppose there are tons of guys out there who love using cotton in their doodle bugs, in their rockets, in their insert genesis atomizer here. But for me personally, it's always something about mesh which I love. The flavor, the vapor production, the growth hit. It's just uh, my love story with mesh. So I'm definitely going to try and set this up with mesh as best I can. But until that day, I'm not going to do a review yet. Don't worry though. Hopefully it's going to be soon because I'm trying it almost every day. Um, I received the Nitro from a friend which I've made through the blog, through the YouTube channel, through Facebook. And he's located in Singapore. His name is... Uh, well, you know who you are. I haven't asked him if I can say his name. But he kindly sent it over to me for review. Very nice guy. Uh, it's practically new. He used it maybe a couple of times and he sent it up to me. Um, because he thought that it might interest you guys. It's not the normal sort of atomizer. Um, so far, Todd has reviewed it. Uh, he did a pretty good job setting it up. I mean, it wasn't flirting, it wasn't dry hitting. So uh, that's already miles, miles better than what I've been able to achieve. So that review is coming soon. Um, the other thing that I've recently been playing with a lot is the this atomizer here. This is the Promiti, um, or rather the Promiti 2, version 2, I mean, the Promiti version 1 had that sort of uh, tapered bottom from 22 to 20. This one is just a straight 22 mm mod. It's made out of titanium, so it's as light as a feather. And um, if you don't already know, the Promiti sort of is a big spheroid. It has some filler material in here. And, uh, there's a pole here, and basically the filler material coats the liquid, the pole goes up and it sucks down the liquid. And you could say that it's set up in a similar way to a dripper, in the sense that, um, you know, it's auto-dripping the uh, wick itself. Now, I have that today on um, also something new, and that is the Tapak Mera mod. Uh, there. Uh, the Tapak Mera mod it's not really that new. It's been around for ages, uh, at least a couple of years. No, no, at least one year, I'd say. Um, and ever since I first saw it, I've always wanted to get one. Thankfully, I've managed to get one uh, from the recent batch. <laughs> and I love it. I mean, this thing is made from red copper. It tarnishes as fast uh, and as hard as it hits. But that's the beauty of having a copper mod. You can polish it up one day, it will start. Uh, tarnishing at night, then uh, with continual use, you know, it starts cleaning up by itself. Uh, this thing hits bloody hard. And um, one thing which I have to point out is that it's not full copper in the sense that a top cap and switch behind copper, they are actually stainless steel. And I like that a lot. Um, if you watch my earlier videos, you know that I used to own a copper mod by the iron mod. That was a superb mod. 
really hard hitting, really nice mode, really good quality materials. But the biggest grab that I had about that mod was that the top cap was made of copper, the lock was made of copper too. And you know, copper is a very soft metal. Um, so I always had problems where the lock ring would just get stuck. Either that or the whole bottom switch just wouldn't come off. And that's because the threading would just lock together if I tighten it too much. I also had problems with the top cap sticking to atomizers. Um, I had the top cap of the, uh, the iron mods, copper mod, stick to my paper for three days straight. I tried everything that I could to get it off and I finally did. It just left that sort of um, that sort of fear in me. You know, I didn't want to tighten my atomizers too much. I didn't want to get this and that. And that of course affected the performance because the connection wasn't really flush. Um, but yeah, I like how the uh, carpark mixes stainless steel with copper. Really, really nice sort of effect. Really nice in terms of usability too. A quick bit. For the Prometi, I'm still trying to get the sort of perfect coiling for it. So far, I've done calls with thin wicks, calls with thick wicks. This one is the thickest wick so far. I've done a thick of 8 with some 2 mm uh, eco wool. Uh, because of that, you know, I'm only doing 4 reps of 28, and that brings up the resistance very high, and in turn, that makes it take quite a while to heat up. So um, I'm just trying experimenting with different coil builds. Once I got something I really really like, then I'll do a review, giving an up close looks at it, and uh, also my uh, personal thoughts on it. Um, admittedly, you know, I've been vaping so much on the billet box. This has been my everyday vape, uh, simply because it's easy to carry. You know, you put it in a sleeve, put it in your pocket, you go out, you don't bring anything else. You don't have to worry about it spilling or leaking. Uh, I've recently picked up a Delrin tank. I did a swap for this with uh, a friend, Derek. Thanks for the Delrin tank. Um, and you know, with the Delrin tank, I've been able to build the typical tank killers or the uh, stronger corrosive liquids, which I haven't been able to do on the standard default tank. On this one. Yep, so uh, you know, when I was having this tank, I ran at least 20 tanks of J Tiger in there because I didn't know what else I could put in or what I should put in. But these tanks themselves, they're not cheap and I didn't want to break it. Uh, so yeah, with this dairy tank, I'm really just putting it through its paces, sucking in tons of tank killers, most notably Hanuman, my favorite, favorite banana flavor, uh, which reminds me, I need to do an updated review of that. Uh, Hanuman tastes very different from Kato. It tastes different from what it tastes like on Nash. It tastes different from what it tastes like on Silica. And that's the beautiful thing about Hanuman. It sort of has a different taste across the board. And, uh, you know, recently, since I've been using the Millet um, Box so much, I've, I've gained this sort of newfound appreciation for Kato Misers. Unlike a lot of people, I didn't start with Katos. I started with the BB Nova. And I think because of that, I sort of missed out on one of those uh, beginner steps of vaping. You know, it wasn't until recently that I found out what a 510 atomizer was, what a preachers atomizer was, and so on and so forth. And I only found those things out because I'm looking for Katos for the billet, bo billet box. Uh, so yeah, you know. Step there, and I'm beginning to come to love the Kato. I actually had a long discussion with a friend, actually, the brewer of Hanuman, Mr. Nazri. Um, I had a long discussion with him the other day about Kato misers, and it's not typically a com much of a conversation piece, but he himself uses a billet box, he uses a brass billet box, and uh, <laughs> you know, we were just talking about Kato misers up really different experience from your rebuildables, your typical rebuildable atomizers, RDAs, RDAs. Um, because with a cutomizer, you're pretty much ensured that you get the same bit every time you change a cutter. You get a box of 2.1 resistance. Any, anyone, those five that you put in are going to be 2.1 resistance. Mm. 
the thing is, you might not admit that rebuildables taste different between builds, but the truth is they do. You have one core too close to the other on one build, it's going to taste completely different from, uh, you know, not completely different, but subtly different from another build that you do, even though it's the same resistance, even though it's the same mixing material. Uh, so yeah, I guess that's one of the virtues of having a cutter once you've found that your favorite juice, uh, and you just want to have a solid bit, a bit that you like, the cartomizer really does do the job. Having said that, I did try and uh, I did go and try the alternatives, and one of those alternatives is this thingy right here, uh, part A and O and part B. This is actually the billet bridge, uh, and this works by attaching a um, BBC dual bottom foil head on this ring. You put this seat on top of it and you shove it into your billet box tank. Um, to be very frank with you, without having to go in depth, it's not my favorite thing in the world. In terms of flavor, yes, you do get a different flavor from a kato. Because a kato well, because the cutters that I'm using, they are single coil, and the BDC head, by virtue of the name, is bottom dual coil, so you know that it's two coils there. Um, as with your RBAs, RDAs, uh, two coils means twice the flavor. According to your uh, airflow, it could mean twice the vapor too. Yeah, in terms of flavor, it's a different bit from the cutter. I'm just going to take a quick bit of the Yes, in terms of flavor, it was a different bit from my regular 2.14 ohm low resistance cartels. First things first, the BDC heads that I had were 1.8 ohm. So, uh, in terms of resistance, they're already a step lower. So that means that they burn water. And that means that atomize the liquid at a different rate. But what sort of uh, put me off the BBC was number one, how difficult it is to sort of uh, maneuver. You know, putting it in, filling up the tank is fine, but if you have half a tank of liquid left and your coil head burns out, it's not the easiest thing in the world to sort of replace unless you have the right tools. Uh, like sort of a cartoon driver or something like that. I've managed to do it once or twice using a pen. And the reason why I mentioned that is because I found that the coil heads burn up really, really fast. Um, with the cartomizer, with the regular 2.1 ohm cartomizer, I can use it for a good 5 to 6 refills. That's 6 ml times 5 times at least 130 ml bottle. I can go through at least one bottle of liquid before I need to change my cutter. Um, but with the billet bridge, I have to change the coil every one and a half to two tanks. Uh, and I'm not running a particularly dunk heavy liquid either. You know, I was running Jake Tiger for the majority of the time, as I mentioned, because I only have this tank. And it's quite shocking. I know that the BBC hit is relatively cheap. It's about Seven, eight, nine ringgit per piece. But spending an additional nine ringgit every two tanks, it does add up after a while. And um, honestly, I thought, or rather, I expected a longer lifespan for those two audits. Mm. Speaking of BBC, um, I still have the Zero starter kit to uh, review. Really sorry for the long delay. Zero, uh, thank you so much for sending it over. You know what? I'm going to move this to the top of my review list. Uh, and I'm using that with a BDC Theromizer. I think this is called the Maxi. And uh, along with something that came in the post today, and this is just a little, um, what do you call these? Oh man, what are these called? What are these called? What are these called? Uh, sliders? No, they're not sliders. 
It's at the tip of my tongue. Anyway, anyway, one of these side by side uh, stands. <laughs> and it's bloody awkward, to be very frank. Um, it looks fine though. It looks fine. But personally, I find this whole side by side thing a bit odd because the button at the bottom. Uh, if it's at the top, we can just go. You know, at least we have that sort of pipe feel. But since the button at the bottom, it's, it's not my favorite thing in the world. Then again, I got that from Slow Tech. Slow Tech. Uh, for less than five US dollars, so who's complaining, really? Right? These EDC tanks are really quite something. Uh, of course, the core heads last a lot longer in these tanks. Number one, the voltage from your ego isn't as high as the four volts on a bullet box. Um, and the tanks here, about 1.5 ml of juice. They're pretty solid, I mean, especially since it's glass and all that. For the price you're paying uh, for a setup like this, it performs pretty well. Uh, I have a couple of friends who are using Egos with Tapen Minis, and I think that this Aspire Maxi is a respectable sort of uh, counterpart. It's definitely not a replacement for Tapen Mini, but it gets the job done if, let's say, a Tapen Mini breaks down, or the core pops out, or you're out and you want something with a glass tank. So yeah, this one was quite affordable too. Seems like I'm talking in loops now anyway. So um, let's talk about some of the things that are coming soon. And um, the first thing that I can think of to talk about is the Chiyu Megan. Uh, if you don't know, the Chiyu Megan is a 26650 version of the Chiyu. It comes with a recessed firing button. And um, it's probably going to be either 28, 29. Or rather, more likely to be 30 mm in diameter, as are a lot of 26650 mods. Uh, it's coming scheduled to come in May, which is tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow is the start of May, but it's said it'll come sometime in May, directly from Korea. Uh, I was lucky enough to get on the list for the Malaysian batch, which I need to understand is probably the first country in the world to receive the. Chiyu Megan. Thanks for setting that up, Mr. Joe Harun. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. This will be my first 26650 mod. Um, the second thing that's on my list that's coming soon is the uh, Sensation DNA 30 box. And that is by Carlos Creation. Uh, Carlos Creations are the guys behind things like the Imperion, the Monster Club Dripper, things like that. You know, they are a local setup. Go Malaysia! <laughs> and they've uh, started building DNA boxes. I believe that the sensation isn't their first effort. It's probably their second already. Uh, somehow something tells me that it isn't their first. And it's not their last either. And, um, you know, although we are still waiting for orders for the sensation to be fulfilled, um, they are already opened up an interest list for their next project and that's called the DNA Zero. If you're on Facebook, look that up, DNA Zero. Um, surprise, surprise, it's another box which looks like the W box. My feelings are a bit mixed on that. Uh, positive in a sense that it's almost impossible to get a W box anymore. Unless you're paying flipper price, the main reason being that the recent list was considered to be the last list of the current batch of W boxes. Uh, the modern himself, Mr. Wapari, got into sort of a uh, slinging match in dead auctions recently, citing his displeasure at flippers. Uh, 
But uh, the Wakari box has been an inspiration for a lot of other mods, most notably the Champion box, or Champion mod, which is also Malaysian made. Uh, and the DNA Zero looks very, very similar to that. The only difference is that it doesn't use wood panels, but rather it uses full stainless steel or full metal panels. I don't know how that will work out in terms of weight. I'm expecting it to be very heavy. <laughs> I've put my name on the interest list for that, but to be frank, I'm still having second thoughts about going through with that purchase. First things first, it costs a lot of money. It costs almost as much as a W box original cost at retail. The retail price is set at 1,100 ringgit. I'll do a quick check online. 1100 to euro since the box is euro. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. The W box retails at 380 euros. Um, the DNA zero will retail at 245 euros. But still, I just feel that a thousand, paying a thousand ringgit for a mod. Yeah, that's that's just quite steep for me. So uh, the uh, DNA zero, uh, but then again, you know, for the sensation box, I paid eight hundred fifty ringgit for that. That's also very expensive. And to be frank, I don't know if I will be keeping that for a long time because it's rather big. I went to my local juice store the other day, uh, the juice machine. It's just really nearby to my place, so I go there quite often. And I saw one of the guys there using the sensation. I mean, hands on, it's a really solid box. Feels great as at least it's not another Hammond Box mod. No offense to you if you use a Hammond Box mod, but Hammond Box mods are a dime a dozen these days. It's nice that uh, Carlos Creations actually took the effort to build a different looking box. So, yeah, it's nice in terms of looks. It's a rectangle instead of uh, that weird flat but wide Hammond Box compactor. It's really rectangle. Uh, it's it's more or less like this cube, except it's square, right? It's square and it's long. The ATC is right in the middle. Uh, it's a mix of brass top, brass bottom, brass fun plate, or was it stainless steel fun plate, and colors on the side. Uh, the only thing that I didn't like off the bat about it was the weight of it. It holds two 18650 batteries. Great for battery life. Great for performance. It's really heavy. I'm not sure if it's because of those brass plates, which are rather thick. They're not a typical thin brass plates for aesthetics, but they are rather thick, substantial brass plates. Top that up with two batteries with the probably the modified battery holders and whatnot, and it does make up because of weight. It is pretty heavy. So that got me thinking twice whether I'll keep it or I'll just let it go. Uh, but anyway, that's coming soon. The model says that everything is ready, they're just waiting for the DNA chips. So Evolve, please do send them their chips soon so I can get my box soon too. What else? I've got a button on the list for the Helix mod. Uh, the Helix mod, I believe, comes from Russia. The, let's do a quick search. Helix. And um, I got it through the Facebook group. Now the Helix. The one that I bought is the brass version. Again, since you know, I'm slowly losing my um, interest towards copper, uh, I'm sure it's great and conductive and all that, but I feel that brass is good enough for me. Um, so the Helix mod, uh, it's it's one of those small mods, although it's not as short as the uh, what you call it, red rod. It does measure in quite close. So actually, it is the same height or size as a red rod. It measures 46 millimeters, which is exactly the same as a red rod. Uh, it comes with a hybrid-ish looking connector. Oh, right, it does come with a hybrid connector. It uses a copper switch, and that's a magnetic switch. It's 22 mils in diameter, 46 mils in height, 48 grams in weight. Um, it's called the hunting sleeve caliber design. So it sort of does look like a 
bullets, uh, hunting rifle bullets. So that's you know, an interesting sort of uh, interesting sort of take on the mod. It's going to be my second tiny mod. My first one, of course, is the rip rod. Uh, I don't know what serial I'm going to get on this. <laughs> uh, I'm definitely not going to get my favorite uh, number 25. Although I will be getting that on the favorite 25. Match it with my uh, Kraken 25, right? Hmm. So the Megan, the Sensation, the uh, Hunting Sleeve Caliber Helix, three things that are coming soon to the HQ. What else? What else? What else? In terms of news in the community, the Hana clone boxes, they are out. Uh, already out in full force here in Malaysia. We've got sellers selling packages, Hana box with clone box with some switches, with some wires, with some battery loader. Uh, I believe it's like 120 ringgit, it's $30 without any chip. Uh, an option that you can do is buy your own DNA 30 chip, solder it in yourself. However, I would recommend that you swap off the battery holder that it comes with because uh, from the pictures that you have on Facebook, the battery holder that it comes with is a spring loaded one. And from the DNA 20 group that I'm in, yeah, it's a common consensus that the spring loaded one contributes a lot to voltage drop, causes a lot of battery misread problems to the chips. So you want to switch out one to a battery holder that doesn't use a spring. I think it's called the Keystone brand, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, if you're buying a clone Hana box kit without the chip, Without it being pre assembled, something to look out for, do swap up the battery holder. With that, you know, there have been some enterprising individuals who are buying clone HANA boxes in bulk, and they are also buying original evolved DNA 30 chips in bulk too. And the reason for that is to um, solder in these original chips into the clone boxes and that essentially gives you a good quality clone. Uh, actually one of the guys on the Facebook on the Vaping with Facebook group has messaged me and told me that his box is coming soon or rather uh, the first box from a batch of boxes that he's making is coming soon and he'll be passing me one soon to test myself. Now I'm in two minds about this thing. I'm really in two minds about this thing. Um, I know that my stance on clones are quite simple. As long as it's done with good quality materials, then I'm pretty fine with it. Uh, then again, you know, the HANA clone box is just a box. How different is it from the ton of Hammond boxes that are out there? They're different because it affects the retail or resell value of the original HANA. That's one thing. And that's something that I don't really like. But then again, the way that they're selling these boxes are really just like the way they sell Hammond boxes. They sell the boxes by themselves. You know, for someone who's starting up modding, it's a much easier and more aesthetically pleasing option than buying a Hammond Junction box. You have to drill it yourself, you have to paint it yourself. You have to squeeze everything into the home vector. You know, you have a Hana clone box. It's all laid out for you there. The holes are all drilled out. You know, you have a nice recess by about half a mil atomizer area. Why not? Maybe you could do it without the logo there. But still, a clone is a clone is a clone. Whatever your stance is on clones, that's your stance. Speaking of the HANA clone, um, assembled, fully assembled boxes have already appeared on Mastech. And these boxes use China made DNA 30 clone chips. So watch out for that. They aren't, they are not evolved chips. So they are clone chips in the clone box. To be frank, I think that they might perform pretty okay. Because China can clone anything. They can clone cars, they can clone phones, they can clone laptops. 
So cloning a DNA 30 chip is pretty much child's play for these guys. I mean, they make they make iPhones in China, they make microprocessor in China. How different could it be? The only thing that I would be weary of is blasting it at 30 watts all day every day. And this is more of a quality issue. Uh, although they might perform admirably, they might not be made of similar quality uh, capacitors and circuit boards and whatnot. So they could burn up quickly. Again, you know, they are really going to be mass, mass, mass produced. So they're definitely going to be manufacturing faults. As you and I know, the cloners in China, you know, QC isn't really one of their uh, KPI. <laughs> so, um, you know, I was tempted up to pick one up, but at sixty dollars seems quite steep to me. I mean, for sixty dollars or seventy dollars, I got the red wrong. So why would I bother to spend that much money on a clone product? I don't know. <sighs> So the Hana Chrome, that's out. What else is out? You don't have the luxury of editing this video, so I'm just going to stop it right here. I don't want to hover too much. Uh, anyway, I hope this video isn't too long-winded. I know it's much longer than what I usually do. There are more pauses and gaps than what I usually have. Uh, again, this is recorded live per se on YouTube straight away. Let's see how that goes. If it goes well then maybe I'll just do it this way. I can get videos out much easier. Uh, but anyway, I'm gonna leave you with a bit. It's only Wednesday tomorrow. But don't fret because Thursday is Labor Day. <laughs> if you have Friday off then there's a long weekend ahead for you. I will be uploading another video tomorrow and that is the review of the uh, Lotus clone. The Lotus Clone Mod, which I actually recorded last week, last Wednesday. So if the way that I talk doesn't really make up, doesn't really fit in you know, this point of time, then please do know that I recorded it last week. I thought that I'll, I'll upload it this week. I forgot that it's Labor Day on Thursday. So some some of the complaints I have in video might not really make up according to real life time. Anyway, I've talked way too much. The timer is now at 37.40, that's 36 minutes too long. So I'm going to leave you with a vape. I pulled up my m from the bottom of the stack, put on my Kraken. Anyway, I'm going to take a quick vape and end this video right here, right now. Have a good one, brothers. Vape on.